What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're taking a look at the Yaxial AX24. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Super excited today because I finally got my hands on the Axial AX24. We got a pair of them actually. I got the green one for my son Axel, and I got the orange one for myself. Really amped to get into these things. So this is right up my alley, right? This has got 51 millimeter shocks, 62 millimeter tires, four wheel steering right out of the box. This thing is super cool. Now launch day from Axial or any other manufacturer is always fun and entertaining. You always get people who are super upset and extremely vocal about what they wanted and didn't get. Then there's folks who are pleasantly surprised, happy, or kind of neutral, you know, but it's the, it's the extreme people on one end or the other that make it really entertaining. And while some folks might have been disappointed with the launch, I am the eternal optimist. I believe the glass is half full, not half empty. It's partly sunny, not mostly cloudy. We don't have problems, we have opportunities. And the AX24 is a great opportunity to check out this little mini crawler, see what it can do and have some fun with it. So let's not waste any more time, let's dive in and check it out. So let's check this little thing out. First off, let's talk about what it is. So this is somewhat of a throwback to the Axial AX10, which was from a 2007 model looked very, very similar. They've done a great job kind of replicating the AX10 in this smaller format. You get virtually the identical body that came on that unit. This also has Rock Lizard tires on it and Rockster wheels, which is also a throwback, not exactly to the AX10, I don't believe. But myself, not being in the hobby in 2007, wasn't familiar with the AX10. So the first thing I thought of when I saw this rig was that it was a mini Danchi Ridge Rock. That's exactly what I thought. You know, the four wheel steering, the crazy articulation, the way the chassis is set up, I thought it was a mini Ridge Rock, which to me was not disappointing because you know, I love how that thing articulates. I love how this thing articulates. So to me, I was really excited by it. So let's talk about some of the key features here. So you do get the Lexan body, you got a plastic body, very basic. You don't have clear windows or anything like a lot of the other Axial models. You just get the two different colors. It comes in the green and it comes in the orange. You get a hinged body with Velcro. It's one of the things I'm not a fan of the Velcro, but I prefer it over body pins. So you get the Velcro front and back. The rear is on a hinge so you can open the body or you could take the whole thing off. Underneath here, you can see we've got a twin vertical plate chassis, which houses our familiar 88 turn motor. The battery is in here in the middle here. So this is interesting. So let's talk about this for a little bit. So the battery, you pull the pin out here and then there's this little compartment that opens up and has your battery in here. So what strikes me here is that I'm wondering what we're gonna have for options for batteries to fit in there. It seems to be really snug with the stock battery, the 350 milliamp that comes with these things. I don't know what we're gonna be able to get in for a bigger battery for longer runtime. So that's one kind of concern that I have. Very familiar parts throughout this thing. We've got the traditional SCX24 motor and transmission. We have the SCX24 servos front and back. I wish they'd upgraded the servos. I love the four wheel steering, but having these servos on here is kind of a bummer because you know they're just, they're not gonna last that long. You know, it's a great concept, but you know one of the first things you're going to be doing is replacing these servos. Speaking of servos, let's look at the chassis a little bit more because the servo mount is different. While this shares a lot of parts with the SCX24, some of them are different, including the servo mount. So the servo mount has been revised to accept the four-link suspension setup that we've got here. So it has the four-link setup front and rear. And the servo mount has got individual slots for the links on the outside. Now I'm wondering if a traditional aftermarket servo tray, something like a Samix or the Enduros that's set up for a four link, I wonder if that will fit in here or not and you can just thread these links in on the outside. I'm gonna have to try that because you know the first thing I'm gonna do is replace these servos. Underneath here, we've got a flat skid plate. It does have the ridges in here, but it's primarily flat. I like the boat skids on the side. It's got kind of a Capra-esque boat skid here, which I really, I liked it on the Capra and I think that's gonna be great here as well. I love the wheels and tires. 
These are still plastic wheels, vented plastic wheels, but the tires feel really good. They're soft and squishy. They're a little stiff, but they, they're huge. You know, they look fantastic on here. I really like how they look. They do not have an insert. It's definitely, you know, I don't know if you can hear the air coming out of there. These are big and soft and squishy with no inserts in them whatsoever and sitting on the vented rims. So probably going to get some lateral flex there for sure in the tires but the rig is light enough where it should be should be okay you start adding weight to this thing you're going to want to do a proper tire and wheel setup though sitting on top of the chassis we've got the spectrum two-in-one esc receiver combo mates up to the spectrum slt3 remote i like this remote again feels a lot like the capra the utb18 so a very familiar feeling with that we'll get into the transmitter functions in a minute when i show you the four-wheel steer but let's talk about the suspension too while we're here looking at the chassis. So 51 millimeter shocks on this thing and look at the articulation of this chassis from the factory. Out of the box, this thing can pull some crazy angles with the articulation. I mean, here's a, my three inch ramp. It can easily flex the full three inch ramp in stock trim. I never thought I would see the day an SCX24 I got to call it an AX24, but it is an SCX24 relative. A mini crawler from Axial could do this. I mean, it is just crazy. The articulation from this thing right out of the box. I love it. Of course I love it. You know, this is my, this is my jam right here. This thing's like my spirit animal. The shocks, I really like the shocks. They are a little bit bouncy, just like the typical SCX24 shocks. But honestly, the, the travel on this thing is great i don't know what i would do for shocks i'm just thinking down the road here if anything maybe just kind of tweak those springs a little bit you know keep it sitting down a little further but and i mean the shock length and the way this thing moves and articulates it's really good i'm really impressed with it a couple of things here so again we've got composite four links front and back they've stuck with the sleeved drive shafts we've got the steel worm gear and worm screws in the disc front and back, full bearings all the way through, just like the SCX24. The chassis is a little messy. It's like a, a spider or an octopus or something coming out from in between these frame rails. So I wish it was a little bit cleaner, but all in all, it's, you know, the body covers everything nicely, so that's a minor gripe. One thing too, the rock lights. So it does come with the rock lights from the factory instead of headlights which i do dig the rock lights i gotta say put this turn this thing on here we'll check it out so it's got four rock lights they're kind of tucked inside the boat skids here but while we're showing off the lights we'll turn it on and check out the showcase feature of this thing which is the four-wheel steer So cool. It's crazy to think this is from the box. Okay, crab walk feature. And your opposite. Does twist pretty hard. And you see that inside wheel starts to lift. So how this works is that it's got the this button right here on the side of the transmitter. So if you're in the middle, it's the front only. And you hit it one time to go up, then you get same phase it's for your crab walk. Down, front, down again, you get opposite. So it's quick, it's easy, it's super easy to do one-handed operation, which I really appreciate. You, know, you can toggle back and forth quickly and easily. So I love the transmitter setup. This is really good. Easy to use. Works excellent. A couple of parting comments here before we get it on the course. You know, these boat skids are nice because they are notched to hold the body in here, but I'm having a hard time keeping the body inside the skid. So I find myself constantly kind of adjusting that. Steering linkage on here is very flimsy. That's going to be another thing that you're going to want to replace right off the bat. Just like a typical SCX24 you know, that's just very loose right there. You could also, if you've got some spare O-rings from suspension or linkage running around, you can throw those O-rings in here and tighten it up. It's just a good 
quick hack if you're looking to tighten those up and don't want to replace your linkage right away. But that's enough talking about it. Why don't we get it on the course and see what this thing can do performance wise. I am so excited for this. I can't wait to try this thing. This is my first time having it on the course. Axel and I have been playing with these things on the kitchen counter, driving over fruit and things like that and shoes. But this is the first time I've had it on the course. Look at the flex. It looks so good with those rock lights on it. Man, this is a cool looking rig. It's growing on me. A lot of people said it has a toy look to it. You know, I had a kind of a, a cheap kind of toy and a th toy appearance. And I think that's from the body, you know, kind of that plain all plastic body. You know, it just it does have kind of a cheap kind of toy feel to it. But the mechanics and everything underneath it is pretty impressive. And I'm pumped to try it. Top heavy for sure. Boy, so right off the bat, I can tell you we need some weight down low and we need to lower this center of gravity. There we go. A wall ride action there. <laughs> the thing is nuts. The slow crawl is decent. It feels better than a typical SCX24. And I feel like this ESC combo here works better than the V1 and V2 from the SCX 24s. Oh, the four wheel steering is so good in that spot right there. Nice, that was good. Try a different approach to the hot tub here. Man, this thing's extremely top heavy. There we go. It said to carry more speed in there so I don't loop out. <laughs> oh, jeez. We may be doomed in the hot tub forever. Let's see. Can okay, slow a crawl out of here. Just get those big tires up over the edge. There we go. <laughs> I'm reluctant to even try mini Moab lines here. I mean, I, you know, Hell's Gate, I and mean, this is just not going to. This is not going to happen. We'll try a little bit. We're going to be a little bit before we get up over Hell's Gate, I think. Like, good save there. What about the escalator here? We'll try this. Getting drive shaft noise, I think I'm full of sand. Every time it would flip over in the hot tub there, there's sand in the bottom. The body would scoop up the sand like a shovel.
We're 0 for 2 on Mini Moab. Let's try the shoot. See if we can get some sort of gauge on vertical climbing ability here. Made it up the chute, which I am surprised about. I did manage to do it. Crab walk saved me on that one. Same there too. Love the four wheel steer. So I think I'm starting to find the strengths of this thing. I was really struggling there in the beginning. Mini Moab is just too much vertical for this thing. It is not a great vertical climber. It does really good on these technical, these tight technical sections. In these areas and these obstacles, I'm really impressed with it. The tires hook up good. It's got good grip. It's got good slow crawl ability. I love being able to toggle rapidly between steering modes. I mean, it's just awesome. It's so easy to use. And the ground clearance from these big squishy tires. When it finds its element and you put it in the right situation, this thing does really good. able to make that climb decent. That's a sharp one too. So that's pretty good. It would come down that pretty well. So I'm getting the hang of this thing. I'm starting to learn it. It's starting to get better and better the more I'm using it here. We're getting there. The AX24, let's talk about it. I'm super anxious to hear your guys' thoughts on the performance runs on this thing. I'm gonna break this down. I'm gonna give you what I liked and what I didn't like, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So let's start with what I liked. So 
I like the concept in general. Now, I wasn't around in the hobby in 2007 when the AX10 came out, but I just like the chassis design. I love the articulation of this thing. I mean, 51 millimeter shocks, 62 millimeter tires, and all of this articulation and four wheel steer from a mini crawler right out of the box. I mean, come on, this is awesome. So I love the concept. I love the whole idea of this rig. And I think it pulls it off pretty well. For me, this is exactly what I like in a rig. I mean, you guys know that this is totally my style. So I absolutely dig the setup of the chassis and how this thing works. The articulation is fantastic. The big tires and the way it moves is just so fun to watch and to drive. The four wheel steering works great. And being able to just shred lines and carve in and out of obstacles on the course, switch it over into crab mode and kind of scoot my way up obstacles when I need to works great. I mean, the transmitter itself just works fantastic. It's got a really good feel being able to toggle back and forth between steering modes right here on the transmitter is effortless. My five year old son picked it up in minutes. He was crab walking around and then dropping it down into reverse phase. No problem. Just really easy and intuitive to use and seamless transitions. So I really dig the transmitter and I love how they made it so easy to utilize the four wheel steer. So ease of use and fun factor, this thing is off the charts. I dig the rock lights and the boat sliders on the bottom. You know, those are some of the things from the chassis. I wish I could toggle the rock lights on and off, but it's not a huge deal. The boat sliders, it's similar to the Capra. I like being able to utilize those to kind of slide up over rough edged obstacles. Just another feature of the chassis that I like. I love that they've incorporated a lot of the familiar SCX24 components. So we'll be able to throw upgrades on this thing really easy and start building this thing out right away. So I see massive potential in this thing right off the bat. It's going to be really easy to start modifying and start making it our own and improving upon the things that we noticed on the course. Now let's talk about some of the things that I didn't like. The big tires and the big shocks and all that comes at a cost because the chassis sits up high and that is extremely evident when driving it. It is very, very top heavy. Vertical climbing, I really struggled with. I thought I was gonna be doomed forever in Mickey's hot tub on Mini Moab over there. It was comical at first, but then it just got downright frustrating. I was shocked that the thing made it up the chute though. So we got one out of three lines on Mini Moab. Struggling with the body a little bit, you know, the, the Velcro on both ends and the hinge in the back, it's a little cumbersome. The, I cannot get the body to fit inside the boat skids i think that's a really great idea and i want to keep it in there for looks and for functionality but it just doesn't want to stay in place so the the body mounting and the body in general is, leaves a little to be desired the steering components i really wish axial would have bumped up the steering components on this linkage and servos particularly the servos are notoriously weak and now we've got two of them that we've got to replace and the linkage too and these, these links are so floppy both front and back. For a four wheel steering system that's really the showcase of this build, I wish we'd just gotten some higher quality components. But those are easy to upgrade, so we'll be doing that quickly. But overall, I really like it. It's a lot of fun, I did enjoy it. I wanted to love it, I really, really did. It has all of the ingredients for something that I would absolutely love, but it is just so top heavy and so tippy. It just needs some help. Getting some brass and getting this thing sorted out chassis wise will really open the doors to some great performance. So we're gonna start work immediately on it. I do like it, I do not regret buying it. We're gonna have a lot of fun with these, but it just needs some help. Regardless of how well it did or did not perform, I'm super grateful for Axial for putting out another awesome mini crawler for us to try. It's just such an awesome time to be in the hobby. And this is just one more example of that. So super pumped regardless. But let me know your thoughts down below what you think of the AX24. And if you've driven one, what were your impressions? Definitely want to hear from you guys. I'm looking forward to it. As always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And stay tuned as we start modifying this thing in upcoming videos. It's going to be fun. We'll see you then.